The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. When I was growing up in yeshiva, there was one boy from Bensonhurst. And if you want to talk about a class bully, this kid was something. I have to believe that maybe something was wrong at home. This was beyond even the normal bully. This kid made our lives miserable day in, day out. Fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, my mash. Finally, seventh grade, I was able to stand up for myself. But up until that point, the misery that this kid put me and many of the other kids in the class through, it's unbelievable. Well, eighth grade came, elementary school is done, everyone went their own way. I went to the Murray Yeshiva High School, other guys went other places, and that was it. You think, chalas, life is on. Last year, a friend of mine was in the hospital in Maimonides. So I went down there. Now, I was coming right before the end of visiting hours. And I know a lot of times the guards get very cuckoo when it comes to those last half hour. They don't even let people up. Let's say visiting hours over at 8 o'clock. They're not going to let you up at 7.30 because they're already making cheshbonot and you're not going to have enough time to get down in time. Shema Israel, do me a favor. I'll go up. Let me just show my face. I, I, I can't. I don't have that time to come back. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm just going to zip in and I'm going to say, yeah, 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 I'll be down in a minute. You know, uh, please just let me, uh, just 10 minutes and I'll really, I'll be out in time. Legit, I'll be out in time. So I zip right by the guard and says, hey, hey, I say, no, no, just one minute, I know where I'm going, I'll just be right back. I jumped into the elevator. Now, I sketched myself because I wasn't sure what floor this guy was on that I'm going to visit. So I was so worked up in my own crazy strategies of getting by the guard, I forgot I need the guy. He's the one who tells you what floor, what room, okay. I thought I heard someone say the 8th floor. I think it was the 8th floor. I wasn't sure which floor it was that I pressed. I pressed one of the floors. I come all the way up to this floor. I come out. I walk out. I look around. It's very weird. You know, usually, usually, the patients are in their rooms. On this floor, everybody's out of their room, walking around in big spacious areas. This doesn't look like a regular floor. Then I realized, I just walked into the psychiatric ward, to the Mejnun floor of the, of the uh, I said, how did I end up here? Shema Israel. Now, you might not know this, the psychiatric floor, you can't just walk out. <laughs> it's like the, uh, I don't know if you remember the Roach Motel, you know, they go in, but they don't come. Once you walk in, you can't leave. They have to sign you out, you have to sign out because they're scared that some of the patients over the years, they dressed up like people, like, like, like people, I mean like, like, like regular, what, and they tried to walk out like a visitor because some of them, you know, are uh, smart like that. So now they wouldn't let me back to the elevators. I'm trying to think, oh boy, what am I going to say? They might admit me to one of the rooms. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. So I'm walking around the floor trying to figure this out, what to do. Then finally I said, you know what? The truth is always the best medicine. I walk up to the, to the nurse station and tell her, listen, I got off the wrong floor. Hatati aviti pashati. Please, you know, let me down. As I'm walking up to the nurse station, I hear a voice behind me. Dovi, you're not going to say hello? I was scared to turn around. I didn't want to see me who's ever is a who. Who was cooked up on this floor? I was nervous, mamash, but the voice was very familiar. I slowly turned around, and there he was. This bully, this kid from my elementary days. And I looked at him, and I recognized him right away. And apparently, even with the white hairs, he recognized me too. And I looked at him, and he had this big smile. I sat down with him. And he started to tell me how after elementary school, this happened and that happened and this school threw him out and that happened and then the family something happened. And he's telling me a horrible life. He went through so much sarot and he had medication and his life and he ended up in this psychiatric ward. And I'm looking at this guy and I'm saying to myself, Abba, Borei Olam, why did you want me to see this? I get it. I didn't by chance come onto this floor. You wanted me to see this. You wanted to show me. Nobody gets away with nothing in this world. 
nobody, you might not always see, but nobody gets away with nothing. And you want to hear something crazy? At the end of this conversation, me and him was a little chit-chat, and I'm about to get up. The guy grabs my wrist and he says to me, I want to tell you something. I'm happy that you came, although I hear you by mistake. But when we were younger, I, I made your life miserable. I used to drive you crazy along with many other guys in the class, and I feel terrible. Ladies, I want to tell you something. Even at that minute, it wasn't easy. Suddenly, when he started telling me that stuff, all those memories started coming back, and I, my body started tensing up. My throat went dry on me. My throat literally locked. And I looked at the guy, and I said, and literally, I needed all the strength of all the king's horses and all the king's men to get this out. But I said to him, I'm you believe shalem. And Hashem should send you and bezat Hashem. He should be able to give you the opportunity to start a better life. It wasn't easy. But that wasn't by chance. I didn't end up in the psychiatric ward of Maimonides Hospital by mistake. Bore Olam was showing me, I want you to see something. In Shamayim, we take people's feelings really, really seriously. Let's be so careful. Let's be so careful. Thank you for listening. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.